Good morning. Today is the 18th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Today's Mass is being offered for Loretta Grubbs. We have the following announcements. This week's second collection will be for Cemetery Upkeep. Check the bulletin for the Mission Co-op collection information. Rest in peace to Richard Underwood, who passed away this week. After Wednesday morning Mass, we will have coffee on the rectory porch with James. First Friday Mass will be offered this Friday at 8 a.m., followed by exposition of the Blessed Sacrament on the rectory porch from 8.30 a.m. until noon. Mass on Tuesday will be at 6 p.m. Mass to honor the Immaculate Heart of Mary will be this Saturday at 8 a.m. Please join me in saying the prayer to St. Michael. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. May our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Please rise and read Father Bill.
A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, All you who are thirsty, come to the water. You who have no money, come, receive grain and eat. Come without paying and without cost. Drink wine and milk. Why spend your money for what is not bread? Your waste for what fails to satisfy. Eat me, and you shall eat well. You shall delight in rich fare. Come to me heedfully. Listen, that you may have life. I will renew with you the everlasting covenant, the benefits assured to David. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Response to your song. The hand of the Lord feeds us. He answers all our needs. The hand of the Lord feeds us, He answers all our needs. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness. The Lord is good to all, and compassionate toward all His workers. The hand of the Lord feeds us, He answers all our needs. The eyes of all look hopefully to you, and you give them their food in due season. You open your hand and satisfy their, the desire of every living thing. The hand of the Lord feeds us, He answers all our needs. The Lord is just in all His ways, and holy in all His works. The Lord is near to all who call upon Him, to all who call upon Him in truth. The hand of the Lord feeds us, He answers all our needs. A reading from the letter of St. Paul, the Romans. Brothers and sisters, what will separate us from the love of Christ? Will anguish or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or the sword? No, in all these things we comfort overwhelmingly through Him who loves us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities, no present things, no future things, <clears throat> no powers, no height, no depth, no any other creatures will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Who in turn gave them to the crowds. 
They all ate and were satisfied, and they picked up the fragments left over, twelve wicker baskets full. Those who ate were about five thousand men, not counting women and children. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. About 20 years ago, in my first pastorate, I saw the need to form a marriage prep team from among the parishioners. And in choosing these couples, I chose couples basically for their affability, but most especially the way that I witnessed their faith when they would come to Mass. They ranged from five years married to one couple that was married for 45 years. And it really worked out beautifully in our preparing young couples from the parish for marriage. And I must say they all became friends of mine and of each other. And we would get together a number of times throughout the year just to socialize with each other. About 10 years ago, maybe 12, shortly after I first got here, one of the couples, the wife had always had stomach troubles with her intestines, diverticulitis, that kind of stuff. But she was having some very serious problems. They were fearful of bowel obstruction and the way that it was explained to me, it was almost like the inside of her, her intestines would collapse and it get sticky and it would all fall down. And so she was preparing for a restructuring of, of, of that. I knew it was a Saturday, I knew the approximate time that allegedly she was going into surgery. And so I called the husband up and I went and said, you know, where are you in the hospital? Which waiting room? I said, I'll come and I'll sit with you for a little bit before 4 o'clock mass. Because I really was close to these people. He said, well, she didn't go in for surgery yet. I said, okay, I'll be right over. We went in, and the husband sat on one side of the bed. I sat on the other. We held her hand. We talked, we tried to joke. I gave her the sacrament of the sick, and we prayed. The nurse kept coming in, and she kept saying, the doctor called, he's delayed, he's delayed, he's delayed, he's delayed, be patient, he's delayed. And finally, I said, I gotta go. I said, I'll call you after I get done mass and see how things went. A little while after I had left to come back here to the parish, the doctor came in and he said to the woman, I don't know what's happened in this room in the last 45 minutes to an hour, but I'm not going to do the surgery because all your signs are reading very well and I see no no need to go in to do surgery because your bowel is acting normally now. She's been fine ever since, an occasional pain or two every now and then. Because of that experience with them in the hospital, these two friends have now become part of my inner circle, part of my closest friends. They're almost like on the level of best friends, if you, for lack of a better word, they probably are best friends. They truly believe that day and Saturday in the hospital that a miracle took place. Through the anointing of the sick, through prayer, and through faith and love. About six weeks or so ago, I received a phone call from, from one of our current parishioners. She began having trouble with her throat. 
And then she began to notice that there was a lump in her throat, and it was getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And finally she went to the doctor, and the doctor ran some tests and checked it out. And he explained to her that sometimes women of her age have problems with an overactive thyroid, and they really should be removed. And you know, he also went and gave her a lowdown and everything, that there could be the possibility that once they removed it and doing the biopsy, that it could be malignant because many of these overactive thyroids do have a tendency to be cancerous. She brought it to my attention and went and asked if she could receive the sacrament of the sick. And so three, four weeks ago maybe, I went and I gave her the sacrament of the sick, and we prayed, and once again, a woman of very strong faith and love, and just the other day she told me that she can't find a lump in her throat anymore. And she went to see the doctor, and the doctor is just mystified by it, and he says, well, I don't see any reason for surgery, and they're going to do some more tests this week to find out if it's, if it's totally gone. I hope stories like that, this close to home, puts a chill up and down on every one of our spines. Because miracles do happen. I believe both of them are miracles, personally. But miracles do happen. But you know, we become rather cynical. We have to prove everything, and we have to discredit everything. Miracles happen to us each and every day. Certainly they might not be as momentous as a bowel obstruction that miraculously cleans itself up before surgery. Or an overactive thyroid gland that just seems to disappear. But miracles happen to us, and we take them for granted. You know, did you ever have somebody run you off the road or speed by you and you thought you were going to lose control of the car? Or maybe you yourself were going too fast and you were going around a corner and you thought you were going to lose it. Why didn't you wreck? That's a miracle. It's not your skill in driving. It's a miracle. God's angel had his or her hand in your spirit. What brings a person back to church after being away for many, many years? I'm humbled in the confessional box. When someone comes in and it tells me they're not quite sure how to go to confession, and after joking with them a little bit and telling them not to worry, I'll help them, they come out with, but Father, you don't understand. It's been 40 or 45 years since I was here last. That's a miracle. For whatever reason, God brought them back to church. I truly believe that a miracle happened to me in the life of my own parents. You've heard the homilies of my mother with her lung cancer. You heard me tell you that my mother prayed for healing, to find peace with what was going on. And it was given to her. My father, on the other hand, was praying for a cure for his journey. And he was very frustrated when she passed. But my mom passed away very much in peace. Because she prayed to God for a healing and to help her and to guide her. I consider this parish of St. Clair of Assisi to be so very important to me. I consider it important because, you know, 
My mom died in 2006. My dad died in 2010. But I came here in 2008. And up until that time, my father and I were never close. I could never, ever do anything right for my dad. I could never please him. I could never make him proud of him, proud of me. And you know, if I heard one more time, how could you be so damn dumb? But when I came here, not just the blessing of all of you, but I got close to my dad. And the most moving experience in my life was him being able to tell me right before he died that he loved me and he was proud of me. You know, the father sin, which many, many of us go through as men, where father doesn't do anything except give you a good swift kick to try and make yourself better. He doesn't realize how much that hurts. That was all washed away. It was miraculous for me to say that I know my dad was So miracles don't have to be some miraculous healing. Miracles happen to us each and every day of our life. But unless we take our time through faith and love and prayer and look at our lives, we'll never see the good that God does for us. Yeah, Jesus in the gospel today has fed more than 5,000. But there's more to this gospel than just the feeding of 5,000. If you have some time today, or even make time today, pull out your Bibles and turn to Matthew chapter 14, 13, verses 13 to 21. If you can't remember that, just Matthew's gospel, the feeding of the 5,000. And look over, line by line by line, how much of this gospel speaks to us. Give them something to eat yourself. Don't you and I have something to give other people? Something that maybe they're lacking, something that maybe they're searching for? And maybe what you and I give them out of the kindness of our hearts is a miracle for them. And in our own lives, we hear that after the crowd was fed, Jesus told the apostles to go out and to collect the leftovers. To collect the fragments, he said. And they filled 12 baskets. Twelve baskets of things that they never really realized that they needed to be grateful for. How many miracles have happened to you that you missed along the way? What's in your basket that God has given you that you fail to realize is at the bottom of the basket? Miracles happen every day. And they happen to each and every one of us. <clears throat> but we need to take the time to reflect on the healing that we need. On the time that we need to talk to God from the depths of our hearts. And to approach life with faith, hope.
By the passion of the cross, he freed us from a daily death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and the powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Save 
from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. <laughs> Have a wonderful